afternoon, everyone. Honorable Consul General Diki Fabrian, distinguished resource speakers, our colleagues from government agencies in Indonesia and the Philippines, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome everyone to today's webinar, Reconnecting Manado Davao Trade Cooperation through a comprehensive and sustainable partnership between business sectors. Thank you for joining us today. I saw from the RSVP, we have participants from Davao, Manila, Manado, Jakarta, and other cities. We hope that you all will be stay tuned until the end of today's program. Let me introduce myself. My name is Alicia Fitri Handayani, Vice Consul for Economic Affairs in Indonesian Consulate General in Davao City. I will be the moderator for today's webinar. Today, we will have two resource speakers, Mr. Jamie Tumimomor, President of North Sulawesi Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and Mr. John Tria, President of Davao City Chamber of Commerce and Industry Incorporated. Both of them are really competent to give us more information about the latest update of the revitalization of Davao Manado connectivity. Identify, identifying products from both Manado and Davao, and of course, North Sulawesi and Mindanao that are potential to be exported and imported through the route. And the last, we will hear from the speakers about challenges and our way forward to make this cooperation be sustainable and mutually beneficial. We also have one guest speaker, Director of Commerce Sriwijaya Airlines, Mr. Heno Rudi Iwanudin. I would like also to acknowledge our colleagues from Indonesian Embassy in Manila, uh, our trade attaché, Mr. Lazuar Dinasution, and also our colleagues from Philippines Embassy in Jakarta, Mr. Reyes, the commercial attaché, and Mr. Ayab from the Philippines Consulate General in Manado. Of course, of course, I would like to acknowledge also our colleagues from Mindanao Development Authority and Department of Trade and, and Industry, regions nine, and also other representatives from the LGU in the Philippines and Indonesia. There is also the representative from the Bureau of Custom, Port of Davao, Attorney Austria, and also from our Bureau, Bureau of Custom in Manado, Mr. Ansor, and from Bitung, Mr. Julianto. And of course, all of our business partners from Indonesia and the Philippines. So, before we start the presentation from our speakers, I would like to invite the man behind today's webinar, our hardworking Consul General, Honorable Consul General Diki Fabrian, to deliver his opening remarks. To Bapak Konjen, the floor is yours, Pak. Terima kasih, Bu Eli. Thank you, Ma'am Eli. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. A very good afternoon to all of us. Mr. John Carlo Tria, President of the Davao City Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Dr. Malo Monteverde, the incoming President of the Davao City Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Bapak Jemi Tumi Momor, President of the North Sulawesi Chamber of Commerce, Bapak Heno Rudi Iwanudin, Director of Commerce from uh, Sriwijaya Airlines, representative from various agencies in Indonesia and the Philippines, including MINDA, LGUs, other government agencies, and also private sectors from Philippines and Indonesia participating in this webinar, Reconnecting Manado Davao Trade Cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, allow me to express my sincere gratitude and appreciation to the President of the Davao City Chambers of Commerce and also to the President of the North Sulawesi Chamber of Commerce for having your invaluable effort in collaborating with us to pursue mutually beneficial cooperation through a comprehensive and sustainable partnership 
between government agencies and business sectors of our two countries, particularly North Sumatra province of Indonesia and Davao City and Mindano of the Philippines as we discuss it on this occasion virtually. Dear participants, COVID-19 pandemic had brought a lot of challenges to us, especially to the very vulnerable sectors of economy, not only in the Philippines or Indonesia, but also to the rest of the world. We indeed suffer even worse some of the countries ended up to the economic crisis and recession. Thank God that we are about to live in a new normal period since the vaccine is now available. For example, in the United Kingdom, this country has utilized the vaccine since a week ago. In Indonesia, hopefully, the vaccine will be utilized by the end of this month or the early uh, next month. However, in the Philippines, what I heard is the vaccine will be available on the second quarter of the year 2021. With the shifting to the new normal ways of living and business transaction through digital, the Indonesian Consulate General in Davao City is hopeful and optimist that the impact of this pandemic could bring new business strategy to various sectors, particularly exporters and importers between Indonesia and the Philippines, especially in, the, in Mindanao. Dear participants, Indonesia is the ninth trading partners, the 14th as an export market, and the sixth as the import supplier for the Philippines. In 2019, total bilateral trade was valued at 7.58 billion US dollar, as Indonesia exported 6.74 billion worth of goods and commodities to the Philippines. However, Philippines only exported goods and commodities to, Indis, to Indonesia amounted 820 million US dollars. So the gap is very huge. Uh, how about the total trade between Indonesia and Mindanao? In 2019, the total trade between Indonesia and Mindanao was only reaching almost 7 million, 700 million US dollar, which Indonesia exported goods and commodities to Mindano amounted to 657,000, uh, 657 million US dollar, while imported only 40 million US dollar value of goods and commodities from Mindanao. So the, our surplus, the Indonesia trade surplus to Mindanao last year equivalent to 617 million US dollar. This, this bilateral trade gap between Indonesia and the Philippines, particularly Mindanao, should have to be optimized by our business players, especially Mindanao business sector, to export more to Indonesia for both agriculture and non-agriculture product. I humbly suggest that Mindanao business sectors to visit Indonesia, especially North Sulawesi province, not only to visit the city of Manado, but you can also visit other cities like Tomohon, Air Madidi, Tondano, or even visiting Sangiha and Talaut Island, Islands to explore and looking for opportunities to tap the market while increasing partnership with North Sulawesi business sectors. 
I also encourage both Indonesia and Philippines small medium enterprise to seize this opportunity of the trade cooperation since both region have so many potential. Dear participant, let me jump to our sea and air connection connectivity between Mindanao and uh, North Sulawesi. Last year, we successfully has revived the air connection between Davao City and Manado with Garuda Indonesia flying twice a week since September 2019. The connection is disrupted now due to the COVID-19 since March this year. So we do have our air connection. And how about our sea linkage between the two places? My record said that at least we have three uh, operators providing the service, not only from the government side like a Roro, but also the private sectors like Rivers Express Line from the Philippines and also the Gloria 28 from Indonesia. However, these operators encounter the unsuccessful of our sea linkage. There are so many factors in it, such as lack of cargo, the price is too you know, expensive, and we believe that we need active participation of viable supply demands, chain flyers to make this connection, the sea connection happening again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, however, on the on October 2020, Pak Jemi, the president of the North Sulawesi Chamber of Commerce, contacted me and informing that there is a plan to have an air cargo operation between Davao City and Manado. It is very, you know, I am a little bit surprised in this, uh, in this pandemic situation, we have uh, an idea to have this air cargo. And once again, in the problem that we are facing, in the midst of the every crisis, there, there is always lies great opportunity. So this air connection, which will be provided by our uh, airlines, uh, Sriwijaya Airlines, will become the impetus to make this uh, situation uh, of our trading between the two places, Mindanao and North Sulawesi, will come true. It is therefore, we meet virtually today to discuss this possibility for Indonesian air cargo operators to serve the air cargo route between Manado and Davao City, and furthermore, connecting to other international destinations such as Japan and China, perhaps, or even Korea. Our colleagues from North Sulawesi Chamber will give us a glimpse of updated regarding this proposal. And this will be another milestone of trade cooperation that will help to foster and bolster the economy between our two neighboring countries. I do hope that through this virtual venue of discussion, we may be able to determine the potential market between Mindanao and North Sulawesi that can be supplied by both sides based on the market demands, as this will also have fulfilled the load cargo requirements. Nonetheless, we can also raise some technical and regulatory issues on trade policy in this forum, as we will take note of it and will endorse it to the right regulatory body to take further action. The Indonesian Consulate General in Davao City, together with our counterparts in Indonesia and in the Philippines government, especially Mindanao Development Authorities, 
and LGU agencies with all our effort and endeavor to continuously pursuing trade connectivity between Mindanao and North Sulawesi materialize. Rest assured that we glad to facilitate business meeting and discussion between business sectors from Mindanao and North Sulawesi in the future to keep us posted at the same time assess and resolve issues encountered by our stakeholder along the way. Once again, all the best to all of us. Maraming selamat and terima kasih. I back to you, Ibu Eli. Terima kasih. Thank you so much, Pak Konjen, for delivering your encouraging remarks. We do really hope that after today's webinar, there will be better development of reconnecting the Davao Manado Trade Cooperation. Before we start the webinar, I would like to remind our participants for kindly mute your audio during the presentation of our resource speakers. And if you have any questions, please type them into the chat box because we will have time for questions and answer session after the presentation. Without far further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Jamie Tumimomor, President of North Sulawesi Chambers of Commerce and Industry, and I will read some information from his CV. Mr. Jami got his master's degree from Samratulangi University, majoring construction engineering. He is the commissioner of PT Sulawesi Multi Abadi and president director of PT Gerbang Indah. He is appointed as president of Kadin Sulawesi Utara or North Sulawesi Chamber from 2020 to 2025. So, Pak Jami. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Be wish to everyone. I hope we are always in God help. Good evening. Greeting always healthy. Uh, dear KJRI Davao City, Mr. Diki Fabrian, and Vice Consul Ibu Eli Handayani and staff of KJRI Davao City, President Davao City Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. John Carlo, along as with member of entrepreneur from Davao City, and Dr. Malo Montefert, Vice President for Trade and Commerce, Sirija Airline Company, Mr. Hanok, and North Sulawesi Chamber of Commerce and Industry, North Sulawesi entrepreneurs who participate in this webinar. Today is a very happy opportunity because there was a joint webinar between North Sulawesi entrepreneurs and the Faux City entrepreneurs facilitated by KJRE the Faux City. Special thanks to Mr. Dicky Fabrian. KJRI Davao City for the cooperation and facility provided for this activity can be well organized. As general introduction, it can be I explain that North Sulawesi Regionally Administration has 15 districts and cities scattered, and North Sulawesi Province and its region has the potential of deeper natural resources and local wisdom. Below, we'll explain the spurrier product from North Sulawesi. This can be export to the Pau City. Okay, uh, potential natural resources, uh, North Sulawesi. I already talked, uh, we have uh, uh, 15 uh, Kabupaten Kota, uh, Kabupaten Bolongondo, Kabupaten Minasa Tenggara, ada Kabupaten uh, Siau, Bitung, Kota Manado, uh, semuanya ada. Di sini uh, already uh, geography and climate. Uh, this is a uh, 15 district at North Sulawesi. Total area number is land by regions. And then number of Iceland by Regency Manipulity 2019. Some of the superior product of uh, North Sulawesi, 
that can be exported to the whole market. Uh, the first agriculture and plantation product. We have cloves, coconut, and it is derivated. So has copra, fish oil, coconut flour, bracket, and almost 30, 30 turnan and nutmeg, uh, coffee bean and process, a shallot, we have leeks, we have potato, a vegetable, corn, palm sugar, and several other agriculture products. And about maritime, we have tuna fish. Tuna fish, we have a big ice and yellow fin. And we have skipjack. We call it uh, chakalang. Yeah. Nados uh, say chakalang. Tilapia and shrimp. We have a uh, fashion like traditional clothes such as uh, batik bentenan and batik minahasa. And then we have a uh, processed food and bread. Processed food uh, just like mangustan pil juice and minasa leek verne and nutmeg syrup. We have cassava chip, cake roll, groho banana chips, uh, garfi suits, skipjack, and several other processed food and beverage products. And North Sulawesi product statistic, I want to explain uh, with the statistic. Production of coconut of Sulawesi province, uh, 2018 and 2019, we have uh, 281.12 and 28 and 2019, we have 296.97. And then we have a uh, harvest productivity production. Uh, we call padi, yeah, tanaman pangan. And our uh, regency and many faculty, uh, we have about much to thirty one, four point oh, and eight one. And we have a healthy culture about harvest area for vegetable. Uh, we call uh, scaling or we call it nado down, bawang down, and uh, bawang merah, we call it manado. And production of estate by agency, uh, we have clove and coconut. Uh, about uh, clove, Minasa have a uh, twenty in area. In area, we are uh, in ton. In ton, we have twenty three hundred three seven eight point oh oh. Minasa uh, is a region there and a region uh, have a much much uh, clove and coconut. And then uh, we have a uh, chain paper, we call it Chabai Chabai Rawit. And then we have a uh, flower and potato, uh, kembang kol, cauliflower and potato, we call it kentang. And we have production of seasonal vegetable and fruit by kind of plant 29 and 2016 2019. Uh, harvest area of medicinal plant. We have medicine plant. Uh, it's a uh, regency, our North Sulawesi. We have a nutmeg and coffee too. At Kapolong Talawot, we have. Yes, that you have presented to me. Okay. okay, pardon me, please. Hello? Silakan, Pak. Silakan. Okay, okay. And then nutmeg and coffee. 
uh, stuck over a nutmeg, nutmeg uh, at uh, Talaut Island. It's the biggest fishery at the fishery production and production value of fish capture by the agency. And uh, we call it marine capture fisher. And next, marine capture tongkol. Tongkol we call a uh, skipjack or, or chakalang. And also we have a uh, marine tuna. Tuna is a uh, uh, many many much fish at uh, North Chabas, especially at uh, Minahasa. Yeah? Minahasa, we have uh, seven, 700 point oh seven. And Voloma export commodity. And now we have a Voloma export commodity uh, and people of commodity. Uh, maybe I can give the copy from uh, this share and then uh, we can discuss each other. This is a continue from table. And this is a follow and value import by country of origin, especially Philippine at 2018, we have a 3.42 and 9.1 volume per ton. And 29, it's about uh, 152.40. And volume and value export destination, uh, we have, uh, we just talk about Philippines. Volume at tone, we have uh, 600 to 89.99 and 2019, we have 6,600 to 4,6 and Point five nine. Uh, there's a few of uh, our presentation, and the next step we can uh, discuss uh, everything about product from North Chalabas. Thank you, uh, Vice Consul Ibu Eli Andayani. Yeah, thank you, Pak Jemi. Thank you so much for your presentation. We learned that there are so many potential products from the North Sulawesi Sea. I hope after this we can also discuss about the possibility also for for your needs, uh, the needs of products also from the Mindanao. And of yeah. course, we will share the presentation to all participants after this. And now, to give us more information about the service of air cargo from Sriwijaya Airlines, I got information that Director of Commerce from Sriwijaya Airlines, Mr. Heno, has another important meeting. And there is Mr. Yustiar who will be representing him to deliver the presentation. Okay. To Mr. Uh, thank you. Uh, we would like to uh, introduce uh, Sriwijaya Air Group. So uh, we have Sriwijaya Air and Nam Air for the aircraft. So uh, we basically uh, are a medium service airline. Uh, mostly we focus on a domestic road, uh, but we also have a flight uh, to Manado. For now, we have a flight to Manado is uh, from Jakarta and to Ternate. Uh, we also have a flight to China from Manado. Uh, for Davao, uh, we are still looking for the opportunity. Uh, is it uh, the best uh, time for us to do the cargo and then a passenger flight? Uh, we still uh, looking for the opportunity if we can have a flight from Manado to Davao. Okay. Uh, in a
Okay, uh, so uh, basically we have uh, more than uh, 41 uh, unit of the aircraft. We have a uh, Boeing uh, 737-900ER, 737-800NG, uh, and then 737-500. And then we also have a uh, ATR for the NAM Air. Okay. This one, we have uh, two fleet, uh, ER, 17 fleet in NG, and then six fleet uh, classic, 11 fleet NAM Air classic, and then five fleet uh, ATR. We serve uh, almost all around in Indonesia, from Medan, and then and, uh, Jayapura. Okay, so, uh, basically, we are still looking uh, the opportunity about uh, how can we uh, deliver a good uh, cargo and a passenger all around Indonesia, also to Manado. And uh, if we want to have a flight to Davao, we are still looking the opportunity. Is it uh, for the regular flight or a charter flight? I think uh, that's all uh, what we can share about uh, Sriwijaya and Amer. If you have uh, any question, you can contact uh, me directly. Yeah. Uh, Pak Yustian, I hope you will be stay in the webinar. So later okay. during the uh, question and answer session, you can also answer the questions from the participants. Okay. Feel free to discuss uh, yeah. if you okay. want to ask something about the airlines. Yeah, thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Yeah, we will move to our next speakers. Uh, after hearing the information from the Manado, North Sulawesi, and also Sriwijaya Airlines. Now I would like to introduce our next speaker, President John Carlo Tria of the Davao Chamber of Commerce and Industry Incorporated. Mr. Tria is graduate of the, from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and obtained a graduate diploma in management at Ateneo de Manila. He is currently the president of Davo Chamber and previously the executive vice president of the same organization. He is a Davo based writer who writes a business column for the Mindanao based H. Davo, Iloilo's Daily Guardian, and the Manila Bulletin, and the director of the online magazine, Trishurgeon.ph. He runs an environmental consultant, consultancy company and owns several other businesses such as coffee and vegetable farm and general trading company. President Ria, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. Uh, terima kasih, Vice Consul Handayani. Good afternoon. Selamat siang. Selamat datang ke Davao to our friends from North Sulawesi, Consul General D.T. Fabrian, Mr. Jimmy Tomimomor of the North Sulawesi Chamber of Commerce, Consul Dr. Malur Maria Lourdes Monteverde, our incoming president, Attorney Austria of the Bureau of Customs, Mr. Yustiar Rizawan of Sri Vijaya Air, representatives from various government agencies such as the Department of Trade and Industry, MINDA, and fellow members of the Davao City Chamber of Commerce and other chambers in Mindanao as well as the North Sulawesi Chambers and business people from as far away as Jakarta. This is actually my uh, third BIM Iaga level joint activity. A few months back, I spoke in a webinar with uh, on information and communications technology cooperation for Brunei, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Definitely, the new normal, the normal baru, is upon us. And us being able to meet like this is actually where opportunity has met our crisis. Years ago, when I was helping facilitate meetings, particularly during the 2012 Dabo Investment Conference and participated in the 2014 anniversary of the BIMP Iaga subregion, 
it was very important to meet face to face but nowadays virtual meetings have become much more acceptable as a means of collaboration last february i also met with representatives of the indonesian embassy and some researchers from Manado who are looking into opportunities in Davao and Mindanao. I have a presentation. I hope uh, it can be um, shown on screen. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, uh, Davao in Mindanao and North Sulawesi, we share a very strong historical tie. Ties, uh, can you go back there? Just stay there, please. Dating back hundreds, maybe even thousands of years, there has been a lot of trade between our peoples, a lot of cross-border migration. And because of that, our products tend to complement each other and our similarities give rise to mirroring or similar preferences which can facilitate trade. I agree with my fellow Chamber President Jimmy. That's why it will be very good to discuss specific opportunities between business people in the near future. The possibility of doing online events has become a golden opportunity for many of us in a way that we had never seen and felt before. The Dabao region, as some of you may know, has a population of about 4.5 million. Mindanao has about 25 million. The regional gross, regional domestic product growth rate in 2019, according to the Philippine Statistics Authority is 7%, which is higher than the Philippines in 2019. In Davao City, which is the anchor city of the region, our population is almost 1.8 million and many of them are young and able. Are, many of them are very literate and many of us are connected to the internet. Next slide, please. Uh, historically, we already had a lot of uh, uh, trade and ties and connectivity. I, I'm aware that Burak, Indonesia used to fly the Davao and Manado route uh, long before our current international airport was even constructed. And Sri Vijaya Air, I believe, for a time also flew the Davao-Manado route. So Manado and Davao are not strangers. So definitely the opportunity to build and reconnect is there. During the Davao, during the Davao Investment Conference in 2012, a memorandum of cooperation was signed in support of the proposed Roro or shipping connection between Davao, General Santos, and Bitung in Indonesia. Next slide, please. In the picture, you will see our former president and now incoming president, Dr. Maria Lourdes Monteverde, who will be giving our closing remarks later. Shepherding this important agreement, along with Mr. Enrique Castillo of the Supply Chain Management Association of the Philippines, Mr. Dionisio Pascual of the North Sulawesi Mindanao Business Council, Mr. Daniel Pesic, Chairman of the North Minahasa Chamber of Commerce and Industry. A memorandum of cooperation was signed supporting the Davao Jensan Bitung trade route. I was there when this was signed. And definitely it was a proud moment for many of us because this heralds the dawn of new trade relationships. Next slide, please. Eventually, an interagency task force on ASEAN connectivity was formed to focus on implementing the Dabao Jensan Bitung route. Among the agencies involved here are the Department, are our Department of Transportation, Department of Trade and Industry, 
Department of Foreign Affairs, Department of Agriculture, our Bureau of Customs, which I believe will be speaking later, and the Mindanao Development Authority, among other agencies. Next slide, please. And in 2017, the maiden voyage for this Dabao Gensang Bitang route happened in the presence of Presidents Rodrigo Duterte and Joko Widodo who visited Davao and witnessed the launch of this important shipping activity. Next slide. Likewise, over the years, various outbound trade missions to both Jakarta and North Sulawesi have been initiated by private sector. Our chamber visited Jakarta and Manado, I believe, in 2017, and uh, concerned government agencies such as the DTI, MINDA, and the Philippine Embassy in Indonesia to identify prospective traders who can make use of this route. Next slide. At the same time, various airlines have always expressed their intent to operate, such as PAL Express, Juro Aviation, and Garuda Indonesia. I believe PAL Express was about to launch its flight, but the pandemic uh, affected its capability. Garuda Indonesia, of course, launched their maiden flight last September 2019 using their ATR-72 aircraft. Passenger load volume, according to the MINDA, of the Davao Manado flight from September until mid-November 2020 has been averaging at 52%, while the Davao Manado Davao sector is at 42%. Next slide. Now, what does an open route mean for many of us? Uh, the shipping and the air routes are um, definitely important to facilitate trade. An open route will provide greater access for local business people, both in Manado, Davao, and the different cities surrounding both cities to engage in trade create employment opportunities, and stimulate other areas of development. Next slide, please. So in the picture, you will notice activities that have to do with the launching of the flight. Next slide, please. Including our MINDA secretary. Okay, what are opportunities or products coming from the Davao region? Definitely, as many of you know, we are exporters of fresh fruits and other high-value crops like banana, pineapple. And we also produce animal feeds, rubber, coffee, cacao. No? Recently awarded in international competitions for its high quality and fishery products. We also produce personal care and sanitation products. Recently, I was informed that there were 29 new products that recently uh, received certification from our Food and Drug Administration, including makers of liquid soap, face masks, and sanitizers. This is especially important as we all try to deal with the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and other disruptions. Many of us remember that face masks already came into short supply during the Taal volcano eruption because masks were also needed in Luzon to help people deal with the volcanic ash. We also produce food items such as candies, food supplements, and what we call functional foods. Recently, we engaged an innovation project with the Department of Trade and Industry that will aim to develop even more of these important food items with an eye towards exporting them outside of the region and the Philippines. We also have industrial products such as activated carbon, corrugated boxes, plastic bottles, and packaging materials. We also produce, uh, I forgot to mention here, we also produce water pipes, both PVC and other, and other materials, coconut oil, 
desiccated coconut and coconut water since the Davao region, I believe, is the biggest producer of coconut in the Philippines. You will notice many of our products are drawn from our agriculture and resources. In other areas of Mindanao, there are other products made from various resources such as nickel, which will eventually go into steel manufacturing. I understand a new steel plant is proposed to be built in some areas in Mindanao. Next slide, please. What are other potentials? As I mentioned earlier, we are a prime source of rubber, palm oil, cacao, coffee and coconut products, as well as poultry and livestock. And at the same time, we are a growing center for education, training, and medical services. In fact, there are inquiries on the possibility of outsourcing many medical services to the Dabao region from different countries, particularly for medical tourism and advanced treatment. We have many new hospitals that are slated to be built and will cater to this need. Likewise, we have new government programs. Recently, there were new tax measures that will hopefully lower um, the uh, co corporate income tax rates and provide incentives for areas like Mindanao. New government programs on agricultural mechanization and new credit programs for agriculture that, have, that will definitely benefit many of our producers. Likewise, there, will be, there are new infrastructure being constructed which will improve trade access and improve our capability to do trade. Next slide. Other opportunities that are non-agricultural and non-commodified include the IT, BPM or information technology business process sector and the digital economy. In the Philippines, as many of you know, we are a big provider of uh, business process outsourcing services. And we also have high participation in online marketing platforms. Recently, at the height of the pandemic, we experienced a boom in business registrations online. I am sure my colleagues and my friends from the DTI can attest to this. There has been a high level of new business online business registrations, which will allow inclusivity and higher participation in trading activities. Perhaps it is time we strengthen our online trading capabilities because this kind of person to person and business to business relationships between our two cities is what will fuel a demand for the connectivity. So as we mentioned earlier, uh, we know that there are many challenges in connectivity. A higher volume of trade will actually fill in that gap. At the same time, some of our members have pioneered online education and training platforms, which, many, which can now be accessed by students from all over the world, including Indonesia. We also have new software products for health management, accounting, and productivity, which will also help strengthen and boost our trading capability. Davao is also an export gateway to East Asian countries like Japan, China, South Korea, and increasingly countries like Russia. Our capability and experience in exporting bananas, pineapples, and other commodities already serve as a template for other kinds of products. There is also a, a great opportunity in tourism cooperation, which we, I know and I'm confident will also fuel a demand for air connectivity and fill in the volume. So as I mentioned earlier, these areas of opportunity are going to be new areas which we should explore even further. Next slide, please. At the same time, over the last three to four years, 
our real estate sector has seen the growth and currently constructing five new townships in Davao City alone, all, almost all of which are more than 20 hectares that include both residential and commercial uh, establishments and buildings. If you see our skyline now in Davao, you will be probably surprised at the new buildings that are being built. We also have four new Philippine Economic Zone Authority zones and new industrial estates that can welcome investors and joint ventures. I believe uh, this can be a good opportunity for many of our business people from both Davao and Manado to look at uh, joint ventures and perhaps maybe joint business opportunities. As I mentioned earlier, Davao is an export gateway. Tourism cooperation. Now, a particular service uh, sector that I believe will will see a lot of opportunity as connectivity increases come in the supply chain management and logistics businesses, along with professional services such as accounting, trade facilitation, engineering, and construction. As trade grows, opportunities for support industries and support professions such as these will also grow between our regions and cities. Likewise, having a strong linkage via Davao exposes, the, exposes both sides to increase opportunities in nearby areas. Next slide, please. Now, what is the way forward that we are looking at? Definitely, every challenge is an opportunity. I agree with Consul General Dicky Fabrian. We have seen an opportunity in online communications. Let us continue pushing this. Increased cooperation will strengthen connectivity further. The more we talk, the more we meet online even, we will be encouraged to visit each other once, uh, normal, situ once normal traveling situations will arise. Unlike before, when we started with a lot of these trade the, uh, trade promotion activities, we today have online platforms and infrastructure that will accelerate business cooperation and trade. I would like to encourage everyone, let us maximize these online platforms. Let us continue meeting, even just to share experiences. Because I believe in my heart that we will overcome the disruptions and the pandemic. Okay, I believe there is a video I shared. I do not know if it can be played. This showcases the different investment opportunities in Davao and Mindanao.
that was actually a presentation that will show us the various investment areas where cooperation between Davao and Manado, the Philippines and Indonesia, North Sulawesi and Mindanao can be strengthened. So we hope to eventually meet each other face to face. We hope to eventually share a cup of coffee or chocolate, lunch or dinner in the near future. So as we always say, dagan salamat, maraming salamat sa lahat, and success untuk semua to you all. Thank you very much. Terima kasih President Tria for your presentation. Thank you so much for giving us a much opportunities beside agricultural products. You you also said there are many opportunities in digital economy, IT sectors, and also tourism sectors. There is also, you said that there is also important to utilize online platform for business to make a better outcome, especially during this pandemic and uh, for what, and way for what. Okay, right now we are proceed to Q&A sessions. We would like to invite our Consul General Diki Fabrian, Mr. Jamie Tumimomor, Mr. John Tria, and uh, Mr. Yustiar from the Sriwijaya Airlines, and of course our colleagues from the Bureau, Bureau of Custom in Manado and Bitung, and Attorney Austria, District Collector of Custom Port of Davao, and also the Head of Agricultural Quarantine, Quarantine of Manado to be our panelists during this Q&A sessions. I will read some questions chat box and I'll, I hope that the speakers and also uh, our panelists could answer the questions. The first question is uh, we got from Mr. Robert. This is for um, President Tria, President uh, Jamie and our Consul General. Uh, what are the challenges Davao, uh, of the Uh, Davao and Manado connectivity since President Duterte and President Widodo inaugurates in the maiden voyage uh, in 2017. Could you ex explain more um, the the challenges of the uh, Davao and Manado? Uh, uh, let, let me, with your permission, moderator, okay. let me uh, answer first. Okay. And, uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Robert, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, you are quite true that in, 19, in 2017, uh, both president uh, just uh, inaugurated uh, the Roro service from Davao, Manado, Bitung. But uh, until now, uh, this service is not, uh, you know, uh, good enough uh, to provide this uh, C connection. Uh, what I heard uh, with the, uh, the problem with that is uh, the Roro is too big, uh, so that uh, and in the meantime the products from Manado uh, or Indonesia uh, is still we still lack of the uh, the, the product for uh, to be shipped uh, by this Roro service. Even though what I heard is uh, the price for the container is uh, quite uh, cheap, around 650 US dollar uh, for 20 feet container. But uh, since we uh, don't have uh, much product to be delivered, to be brought to, the, to Mindanao, to Davao, this uh, become the, uh, the handicap for uh, the surface. So the challenge for this, uh, in order to make this Roro surface uh, back to uh, the surface again, uh, both uh, uh, President uh, Tria and uh, uh, President Jimmy already informed us uh, about the products for broad region that can uh, be brought each other. Uh, so this is a quite a challenge for our business people to make sure that uh, they can do their best in utilizing uh, this Roro surface. And uh, in the, se the second point, uh, since uh, the Roro, uh, the vessel is quite big, there is an, uh, an idea to have a sm smaller uh, in capacity of the Roro 
to make uh, this uh, lack of uh, uh, products abroad uh, can be utilized. So again, the challenges is there. Uh, we have to take this opportunity. Uh, President uh, John Tria informed us that DAFO may serve not only as the, li the last destination, but it, it can also serve as the transit uh, places for the East Asia countries such as Korea, Japan, or China. So the, the Indonesian uh, business people should seek this uh, opportunity to make this uh, service uh, as a benefit as uh, proposed uh, by the two government of the Philippines and Indonesia. That's, I think, uh, my, my, my answer for your question, Mr. Robert. And I don't know whether both uh, Pak John Tria or uh, Mr. Jamie would, would like to add some uh, of uh, this answer to, to, for this uh, question of Mr. Robert. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Consul General Diki. Uh, President Jimmy, you might have an answer. I will share in your answer later and I will add. <laughs> Okay, um, I would like to just share what I know and uh, basically from um, my friends in the shipping and logistics sector. Uh, one thing that improves the viability of shipping, both air and uh, shipping in sea connectivity, for instance, is when you have multi-destination trips. Like for example, as mentioned by Consul General Fabrian, if it is a return trip, then maybe it might not be very viable. But if, it, if there is a forward destination, then there might be trade opportunities, for example, in other cities that the, the shipping route can actually engage. And that will actually uh, make that's, there's a possibility that the shipping route and the trip is going to be more viable. Mm -hmm. That's maybe one way. I, I suggest we study that further. We look at possible um, issues that might uh, either help, or that might enhance it, and maybe we can work at ways to make this uh, more viable. Of course, Having more business-to-business -business connectivity will encourage more interaction. And every time there is interaction, and as I mentioned earlier, since many of our are the same, uh, definitely having more interaction will facilitate more usage of the sea connectivity. Thank you. Thank you, President Ria. Pak Jemi, could you add more about the challenges? Yes, thank you, uh, Ellie. Uh, honestly, uh, I'm not accepting you know about uh, this problem because I stay at Jakarta. But I think uh, maybe it's too expensive, uh, high cost, I think. So uh, at the time to discuss each other, the time uh, how to solve the problem. And now I think... Uh, Bechukai from from uh, Manado here this webinar. Uh, excuse me, Miss Ellie. Mungkin perhaps kita bisa mendapatkan masukan mungkin dari dari uh, apa Bechukai mungkin uh, kendala kendala atau hal hal okay. apa mungkin yang. Ya yeah. siapa setelah ini ya. Ya, yeah. thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, so um, President Jamie is uh, proposed to have some of some few from the Bureau of Custom in Beetle. I think we have uh, Julianto here. Could you please share about the experience? What what was happened during twenty seventeen last time? Is Pak Julianto still here? Yes, I'm still here. Yeah, please, Mr. Pak Julianto. Yeah. If you can share to us about the challenges in last 2017. Uh, first of all, I want to say I'm sorry 
because I <coughs> uh, point in Bitung in 2018. So, but but <coughs> uh, my experience at the last three years, there's no uh, importation activity from Philippines to Bitung. There's uh, some ship that <coughs> try to make a route, new route from Davao to Bitung, but there's no commodity that can bring from Bitung to Philippines or from Philippines. Uh, Julianto, I think okay. The connection, yeah. Please, Pak. Silakan, silakan. I think for custom, uh, if there's a opportunity trade from uh, North Sulawesi businessman or from the FAO businessman. We, as a government agency, will support and give the best facility for uh, all businessmen from Indonesia or from Philippines. But there's a limitation for a product that can bring in Bitung, especially from agriculture product like fruit like vegetables uh, but the the others can uh, import to north sulawesi from uh, philippines there's no problem perhaps that my answer from bitung thank you terima kasih pak julianto okay we move to next questions this is uh, okay uh, miss ellie yeah. excuse me yeah pak oh yeah uh, I have idea. Uh, maybe it's because of uh, our regulation, and then maybe we can make a simple regulation. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Julianto maybe can help for we we solve us, and then uh, it's not expensive to buy the transportation by Roro. Maybe just like that. Okay, Mr. Jamie from Kadin Sulut. Uh, right now, in two years, uh, from 290 until 220, we have custom, we have uh, already already to <coughs> to make uh, international hub port Bitung can be uh, <coughs> visited by major shipment but uh, there's a clause from major uh, shipment there's they want to uh, make a trip from china or other country to bitung there's if there's a 200 tails of container export from Bitung, and they will <coughs> bring 100 container import. Right now, uh, we have a communication with exporter in Bitung or not Surawasi, but there's uh, a little problem that <coughs> uh, the quantity of containers, the quantity of the product that can be exported to be from Bitung to other country, uh, not suitable to the limitation of uh, oh. from the uh, major shipment. We have a, maybe in a month, there's uh, only 200 tails in a month but the shipment want to uh, 200 
Theus container. <coughs> Uh, Julianto. If if really, I I think I, I I get the problem. Okay, uh, let's go on. Maybe okay. better communication. Okay. okay, thank you, Pak Jamie. Maybe we can continue to talk okay. about it later. Now we move to the second questions. Uh, this okay, one. thank you. Oh yeah, thank you Pak Julianto. Yeah. I would like to invite Pak Yustiar from the Sriwijaya Airlines. Pak Yustiar, we need more information about your service. Maybe you can tell us uh, more uh, about the uh, air cargo. How do we can utilize the service, something like that, Pak Yustiar? Okay, uh, first there's a question about uh, plan link between Sulawesi and Davao from Mr. Gerardo, right? The question. Uh, so uh, for now, we still focus on uh, domestic route, you know, because the, this pandemic is really have a big impact for us. Uh, some of uh, our international route uh, is uh, stopped for a moment because we still review it. Uh, but uh, if we uh, have a plan is to Davao, maybe we still need uh, looking for uh, any partner. If uh, there's a partner who wants to make a charter for us, uh, we will be ready uh, to have a flight uh, all around uh, Sulawesi or Indonesia uh, to be ready to fly to Davao. And then uh, for the service, uh, we have uh, for the regular flight, we have uh, 20 kilo free baggage. And then we also, as a medium service, we also give a snack uh, and a welcome drink for each of our passenger. And then uh, for the cargo, mostly we, uh, we focus on a general cargo uh, for now, but we also uh, have, uh, have a wet cargo also, uh, and then uh, an animal. Uh, but uh, for a dangerous good, uh, we, we still not uh, have uh, the cargo for dangerous good. Uh, mostly we still use a general cargo. But uh, if there's uh, any special inquiry for a cargo, it's like, uh, previously said that um, Sir John Tria uh, Davao is a prime source of rubber, palm oil, and carbon. Uh, we still can uh, deliver it to Indonesia. Uh, there's uh, no restriction or something. Uh, we are ready to have uh, either as a charter for cargo, uh, freight, uh, freight, uh, freight flight, or uh, passenger. Uh, we are already moving to Davao. But May, uh, then again, we still need uh, looking for the opportunity uh, for the partner to have uh, maybe some kind of uh, business because we still need to review it. Uh, if we can go to Davao, uh, flight from Manado or any city in Indonesia. Thank you, Pak Yustiar. Maybe after uh, you can leave us our contact. Your contact also in the chat okay. box. So uh, whenever anyone here is um, okay. need to know about that, they could directly contact also to you. Or, and of course, can from our office. Okay. Uh, now I would like to invite Mr. Felix Isizuka. He is the uh, president of the River Express Filipina. So for your information, River Express Filipinas with River Express Lines is uh, surfing the route before and he they also already have their trial shipment uh, trial shipment in the 2019 Felix uh, he, maybe you can share to us about the problem of the uh, the issues of the connectivity between Davao and Manado Felix yes uh, hello Hi. yeah yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much uh, again for this opportunity to, to speak uh, to our fellow uh, members uh, who's present in this uh, webinar. Yeah, as, as earlier mentioned by uh, Miss Ellie, uh, we, we have launched uh, our service uh, last year, July 2019. Uh, we, we call it the expanded uh, BIMP route, uh, C connectivity direct to, to market. Uh, as mentioned by uh, uh, Consul General uh, Fabian Dicky earlier, 
the cargo traffic between Davao and uh, North Sulawesi is not really, really much uh, these days. Um, and on top of that, uh, we have similar cargos or, or commodities uh, between the two countries as well. So trading is quite difficult, uh, to my opinion. But uh, when, when we started um, looking, at the, looking at the BIMP route, uh, together with my team, we, we expanded the, the, the route all the way uh, to Brunei, uh, uh, some ports in, in Sabah, Malaysia as well, and all the way to uh, Vietnam, just so we have that critical mass in terms of uh, you know, uh, sustaining the service. Uh, in the absence of uh, cargo within within the BIMP, but even if uh, we manage to 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 bring in um, substantial volume uh, from Vietnam, uh, it did not really work uh, continuously because there's not much really cargo with, within the BIMP uh, ports. But uh, we we never stop in 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 uh, talking to private sectors. Uh, presenting uh, the, the, the shipping model that we have. And right now we're also in, 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 in uh, close communication with another Malaysian interest uh, to, to, to connect uh, to uh, Port Kilang. Uh, because Port Kilang in Mindanao, there's so many traffic uh, in terms of containerized cargos. And once we, we, we tie the, 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 the contracts uh, between my company and, the, and, and this uh, uh, Malaysian entity, uh, the, the the Bitung call will be relaunched again. Uh, we're, we're, we're looking at uh, at least uh, January to February uh, 2021 uh, relaunching of our BIMP route. Uh, since, since Malaysia is a member of, of the BIMP, so it's, it's part of the, the initiative of my company to, to, to really find ways how to uh, sustain the service that we have started. Uh, we, 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 today we're not running the service, but uh, we, we did not quit uh, uh, just, just so uh, to announce everybody that uh, this service will, 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 will be relaunched uh, soon, yeah. Okay, Mr. Felix. So we are looking forward this February. I hope we will have uh, the shipment again. Yeah, well, taking this opportunity as well, uh, if, if if any exporters from from Manado or importers as well uh, uh, from 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 Mindanao, please uh, feel free to contact us. We have offices in in, in Davao and in Makati. Uh, our team is always on, on top of uh, every opportunity uh, which would would want would want to 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 uh, take uh, our service. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. We also have a question from Consul Manuel Ayat. Would the quarantine service at the port of Bitung in North Sulawesi be ready to accept Philippines agricultural products? Uh, I would like to invite Pa Doni from the agriculture quarantine in Manado. Could you please? Okay. Okay, good, uh, good afternoon. Oh, yes, ma'am. Sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, I am uh, represent Mr. Doni because he has been in another event and, and he is in uh, on the way to Manado and there is no signal on, on the way. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Can you hear my voice? Because yes. I... Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, would you please pardon what what should I answer about? Because uh, the signal here is not st stable like that. Uh, there is a question from the Consul Manuel Ayab from the Consulate General in Manado. He asked that would the quarantine service at the port of Bitung in North Sulawesi be ready to accept Philippine agricultural products since yeah, maybe you can uh, elaborate more about the question. Okay, okay. Uh, actually our bureau, uh, our quarantine, quarantine officer, quarantine agriculture, quarantine of Indonesia, and here our uh, station here, our um, we are agriculture quarantine of Manado. We are we are uh, ready for for any 
any plan or something that have been have been uh, planned for our country, but of us for our, for our prosperity, for our both of our country like that. But uh, we have uh, actually we have some obstacles ob obstacles here. Uh, we have uh, such as uh, uh, government rules that that cannot that uh, that make. Uh, some fruits, fruits, fresh fruit, and some vegetables, fresh vegetables from another for another country, uh, including Filipina, cannot uh, cannot come to Indonesia through Manado like that because we have a special entry and exit point for for several for several uh, commodities like that. But actually, uh, for another for another products. Uh, especially for uh, product that have been that have been cooked or something like that that there is no that has that has a uh, what is it that, that that it can be safe for us uh, we have uh, we can we can we can accept it to indonesia like that to to import to Indo to export to indonesia through manado through uh, port of bitung but we are here, uh, our bureau, of course, we will always uh, give the best for our country and we will uh, support any plan or any, uh, or any uh, conclusion or something like that to make our prosperity better than better and better like that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Um... Actually, um, Pak Konjen, maybe uh, could you please um, Pak Pak Konjen, yeah, about the ini Pak the port of Bitung for accepting yeah. the agricultural products from Mindanao. I think you have some updates. <laughs> right, thank you, uh, Miss Ellie. Uh, Pak Manuel Ayab, how are you, Pak? Feeling great, sir. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations for this uh, successful uh, webinar, sir. Thank you. Pak Ayab, uh, as uh, mentioned by our colleague from the quarantine, uh, until now, uh, Bitung or Manado could not accept. It is not allowed to accept the agricultural product from uh, the Philippines the horticultural product or agricultural products, including the fruits. This is because there, there is a, a, a Minister of Agriculture Regulation back to 2012, if I'm not mistaken, number 10 and number 11, or number 11 or 12, something like that, uh, which, which is hampered uh, to receive uh, the product from the Philippines, the agricultural product from the Philippines. Uh, that regulation, the minister regulation uh, back then in 2012, was uh, meant to make uh, our uh, our uh, Indonesian uh, food, uh, fruit especially, uh, to be uh, far better in the term of regulation. What I mean is that uh, at the time there was uh, uh, activity. Uh, coming from abroad, from other uh, friendly countries, uh, to uh, to export their uh, fruit product to uh, Indonesia. So uh, we have been uh, discussing this issue with the uh, colleague from the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, so that this uh, Minister Agriculture Regulation to be taken out. Uh, and in this regard, if it is uh, successful, then uh, Bitung or Manado will uh, ready will be ready to receive uh, agricultural product from the Philippines. So we are working on it, uh, Consul Ayab, and uh, just uh, pray, uh, just you know, keep our finger crossed that uh, the Minister of Agriculture of Indonesia will uh, soon uh, allow uh, the product of the Philippines coming to Indonesia through Bitung or Manado. That's, that's it, Bu Eli. Back to you then. Terima kasih, Pak Konjen. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, I would like to invite again for the questions if anyone would like to ask the question. But I, I, I saw there is a question for Mr. Felix. Uh, this is from Maricris Carlos about uh, won't the low volume issue be a problem going forward, especially since COVID has dampened the demand for the next shipment? Mr. Felix, could we hear from you? Yes. Um, well, definitely low volume will always be a problem for every shipping operator. Uh, especially like us, we're a very, very small shipping operator. Uh, we need uh, we need at least uh, uh, quite quite good numbers in terms of uh, volume uh, to 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 be uh, loaded uh, in the service. Uh, low volume will definitely not sustain any services. That's why the the first uh, ship uh, the first maiden voyage of uh, a super shuttle uh, sometime in twenty seventeen was never been been done in the second round. My sec my my first uh, uh, shipment as well uh, has not done any any second as well. Uh, so volume is really really important. Now just to add up on the on the uh, fresh produce and vegetables uh, to be allowed in in Manado, this is this will be a big help in terms of uh, adding volume to be shipped uh, to 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 Manado from from Mindanao. Because uh, Mindanao has uh, very, very good protocols in terms of food safety and as well as uh, quality of, of the fruits like bananas, pineapples, and all other crops. Uh, it would be nice to, to see some, some uh, good movement when it comes to allowing this type, type of product to be shipped to, to, to Manado. And Manado obviously is far disconnected from, from Java Island uh, when it comes to sourcing uh, the bananas. Uh, if, if they want to have uh, fresh bananas, and I think that the the, the 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 nearest and best quality still is Mindanao, and since I have this reaper service uh, shipping model uh, that can connect Manado uh, and, and Mindanao, uh, it's not bad I think to to really look at this seriously uh, because it, it's it's a good base volume uh, to to run the service efficiently. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Felix. Thank you. Um, this, the next question is goes to Mr. Um, Jamie. Pa, Jamie, there is some question for, one question from Lafayette Lim, Mr. or Mrs. Can we be introduced to retailers or wholesalers in Manado who are interested in Filipino and or even Korean and Japanese products? Pak Jamie, maybe... Can you introduce Pajemi? Pajemi? Yes. Can you hear my voice? Okay, yes, okay. Uh, I think it's a good, a good uh, time to... Uh, now is our uh, participant maybe want to induce uh, their product so maybe from from Nado or from Philippines, maybe can introduce uh, him or her product, and uh, maybe she looking for the buyer or else, and we can uh, make a transaction for this moment. I think it's just an idea. Maybe I go early. We can make a time for our uh, participant uh, to promote. The promotion uh, our our uh, product product from Indonesia or product from Davao, and we we can hear that together. How about that? Okay, Pajami. Actually, uh, for today's webinar, we will have this uh, tentative program. But for uh, the business matching or or business uh, virtual business matching, we will have it. Uh, another session pa, for that since oh, our time is limited to 4 p.m yeah there is a follow-up actually after this webinar it's not only stop after this so uh looking forward pa, we will have it the after this okay okay, okay. i see that i see that yeah so i uh, would like to ask whether 
there is still any questions from the participants? Maybe anyone, uh, you can say it directly. Uh, if anyone have questions to our speakers and panelists. Uh, Miss Ellie? Yeah? Yeah, one yeah. final question from my side. Um, earlier on uh, our, our um, Indonesian Customs of, of, of Officer, uh, mentioning about uh, the 200 containers uh, monthly uh, possibility uh, out of uh, out of uh, Manado, and since we are uh, the carrier, I would like to 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 get more information about uh, that particular cargo. Even if it's just monthly, we can still consider that uh, just to add volume on our service. Yeah, so I'd like to to get some more details. Uh, who is this, or who are those? Uh, uh, customers or exporters and what are the contact details uh, so we can start uh, communication uh, to them, yeah. Pak Juliarto, Julianto, sorry. Pak Julianto. Uh, anything you want to share? Hello? Pak Julianto? Because... Yes, Mbak Eli. Yeah, Pak. Uh, there is question, Pak, about the one with the apa, kapal yang tadi 200 tis itu, Pak, informasinya itu produknya apa? Hmm. Ya, serta mungkin bisa diceritakan lebih lanjut, Pak. Oke, okay, uh, the process from that, uh, the information that uh, that I mentioned before uh, is a discussion from with uh, from custom bitung with uh as I -C china jadi uh, major uh, company shipping from china uh, we want to make a direct call to bitung that can uh, in our discussion that as want uh, want to make a route to Bitung, if there's a 200 uh, tails container export from Bitung to uh, China or another uh, country that ship have a uh, route there, uh, and what they want to bring a 100 uh, container for import to Bitung to North Sulawesi. So. Uh, Right now, uh, in Bitung, the volume of export is only 200 uh, container in a month. So uh, <coughs> the shipping company uh, uh, have a problem that the economic economic. Uh, Economic problem. There's an economic problem with the the apa? Maybe there's no gain for their trip. Perhaps that's can I inform to Mr. Felix? The, the the destination of container export from Bitung is uh, so very there's no uh, one uh, point of destination. Okay. Okay. Terima kasih Pak Julianto. Okay. Um, there is a question for Attorney Austria from Davao Custom. Attorney Austria, are you still here? Hi, good afternoon, I'm here. Hi, good afternoon, Attorney Austria. There is a question for you. Uh, is there any tax import subsidy or tax incentive from imported to East Asian growth area like Indonesia? The question from Mr. Robert. Well, 
The same rules apply to all of our trading partners in the ASEAN. There are no separate rules uh, for BIMP countries. So um, within the ASEAN, amongst all of the 10 um, member states, depending on the type of uh, commodity, we um, have zero rated duties and taxes. So um, I hope that uh, answers that question. And also I'd like to share it as earlier stated that uh, there is a Ministry of Agriculture um, order or memorandum from the Indonesian government prohibiting the importation of agricultural products from the Philippines. Understandably so, it is normal for some countries to um, control the import of certain products. Uh, however, I'd like to just share to the body, um, especially to our international, uh, rather our, Indo our Indonesian partners, that the Philippine government has no such equivalent uh, prohibition. Uh, stated simply, um, you are free to import your agricultural products into the Philippines. So I think it would be um, um, both to our advantage if um, the same can be done for agricultural products coming from the Philippines and that way we can encourage the growth of volume. Another thing that I've observed since 2017 when the first, if I can just go back a little, uh, since I've already answered that question with the, with the um, permission of the moderator, Vice Consul Eli. Um, what I have observed since 2017, it's correct that the vessel that was used was too large. Um, it's good that there's now a new carrier that started last year. This was what we were discussing with DTI, the Department of Trade and Industry um, here in Mindanao. Uh, to look for a possible, a new carrier that's willing, brave enough uh, to go and um, uh, take over the route. I think at the preliminary um, discussions about opening this uh, trade route, it was um, w one of the reasons why it was uh, deemed viable was uh, to have Davao or Mindanao be a major transshipment hub for cargoes uh, that are intended for uh, northern Sulawesi, uh, especially since Davao is more proximate to uh, that part of your country versus Jakarta to Sulawesi. So this is an information I'd like to share to Mr. Ishizuka, as well as the current president and the incoming president of the Davao City Chamber of Commerce, that perhaps we can pivot back to this and explore the possibility of creating uh, Davao as a um, potential jump off point for commodities that are imported into uh, not necessarily from the Philippines or from Mindanao or Davao City, commodities from China that are destined ultimately for uh, Manado no? or Bitung instead of it passing through Jakarta or through Singapore, for example, we have daily, uh, almost daily arrivals of vessels from uh, China into General Santos City in the support of the Changas as well as in Davao City in our principal port in this collection district. From here, then we can transship it to uh, the, the that area of Indonesia. So. Um, it's, it's expanding the scope beyond the merely moving commodities between our uh, two areas. That's correct. Uh, I think one of the reasons why it has been difficult to um, pick up is because there is a uh, similarity, marked similarity between the commodities that are here in our area as well as in yours. So those are my comments and observations. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Austria. I would like to add information that uh, the uh, fresh fruits and fresh fruit vegetable product is not prohibited, but the entry point is prohibited. The entry point only in four uh, area. There is a Tanjung Perak port in Surabaya, uh, Eastern Java, and then from in the Belawan Seaport in Medan. 
and Sukarno Hatta Airport in Jakarta, and also the nearest the nearest nearest one from Manado is in Makassar, Sukar uh, Sultan Hasanuddin Airport. So it's not prohibited, but the entry point is limited to to come to Indonesia. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, um, since there is a limitation of time, and I think we still have more much many questions um uh i would like um to apologize for everyone who already sent us the questions here um before we uh, we, we will have a follow up if you have any question uh there will be a follow up answering after this session but before we have the close remark i would like to invite uh maybe our consul general pak jemi and pak tria president tria do you have uh, anything to say okay uh maybe my parting words yeah please pak um, definitely this will not be the last uh, online meeting. There will be many more. And uh, to my fellow president, Pak Jimmy, thank you very much. Terima kasih for giving us this opportunity. We we'll definitely will need to can study a lot more about how we can facilitate this kind of connectivity. So maybe we will continue doing that and. Uh, First of all, and last of all, thank you very much. Thank you, President Tria. Pa Jamie. Okay, yes. Thank you, Ms. Eli. Uh, honestly, it's a good opportunity. And we are so happy. Actually, uh, uh, Kadin from uh, Sulawesi Utara. And then I have an idea. Uh, the next webinar, maybe we can make a uh, business to business. Just like I think uh, someone uh, make a uh, idea to business uh, Galaxy Note 10 to add on, we can have a business to business discussion. I think it's a quote. Maybe not now, but uh, the next webinar, and we can follow up about this uh, first webinar. Just like that. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Consul General Pak Diki. Special thanks. Terima kasih banyak. <laughs> Demikian juga kepada Pak uh, President uh, Commerce, uh, Pak John Dria. Terima kasih. Thank you so much. Nice to know you, Mr. Dria. Thank you, Ibu Eli. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, uh, I'm quite glad that this uh, platform of having virtual uh, webinar discussing about the possibility for having a reconnecting of Manado Davao Trade Corporation uh, is, you know, uh, followed by very enthusiastic by all, all of us. And uh, in our part, uh, we will keep on continuing uh, to facilitate, to give the facilitation to both uh, business people from Mindanao and from North Sulawesi to make uh, the cooperation becoming uh, uh, true. Becoming true meaning that uh, uh, the, not only the air connection or the passenger connection or the cargo connection through the air or the sea connection uh, that we mentioned earlier, uh, but uh, for the benefit of our two people and uh, for the benefit of our two countries, this co uh, trade cooperation between Mindanao and North Sulawesi can be executed and uh, let assure that uh, my office here, the Consul General of Indonesia in Davao, will uh, keep on doing this uh, facilitation to make it happen. I thank you. Back to you, Eli. 
Thank you so much, Pak Monjen, President Ria and Pak Jemi. Now we proceed to the next session. I would like to invite Madam Dr. Malu Monteverde, the DCCII Vice President for Trade and Commerce, and uh, the incoming President of Davao Chamber to deliver her closing remarks. To Mam Malu, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. To His Excellency Consul General Diki Fabrian of the Republic uh, of Ch Indonesia in Davao City and to Consul Eli Handayani, to the President of North Sulawesi Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Jemi Tumimomor, and my colleagues in the Davao Chamber, President Chan Tria, uh, the different stakeholders here in this uh, webinar. You know, um, this mm -hmm. is like a de deja vu for me. So good afternoon to everyone. Davos Chamber of Commerce and Industry has always been in the forefront in pushing for inclusive growth in the BIMP Iaga region. As the voice of the business community, DCCI has been largely visible in leading the promotion of investments in Davao region that would certainly impact the rest of Mindanao. It has been almost a decade when I have visited Manado and Bitong and Jakarta also to revive the Manado trading route through the ASEAN connectivity as president then of the Davao City Chamber of Commerce way back in 2011 and 2012. Philippines, the good governor called me as the Ibo Roro then, and we have had many of you as artists here in Davao City. With these recent developments, Davao City as a strategic center of trade in the island with the good ties that we have with the Republic of Indonesia in Davao City and that of the North Sulawesi Chamber of Commerce, Pat Jemi, we will continue to exert all efforts needed through activities such as this wonderful and successful webinar, pardon my dogs barking, this afternoon to cascade to our members and the rest of the business community opportunities and information that would help them to further strengthen their businesses, most especially during this time wherein businesses are struggling due to the impact of the pandemic. All of these efforts are geared towards the inclusive development and recovery of not just Davao City, nor that of the Davao region, but the whole island of Mindanao. You know, this is like deja vu. My husband's family, the Joyce family, which is based in Lapuan, Davao Occidental, was actively trading with Manado and Bitong decades ago. We hope that the revival of this route will really realize and formalize this strategic Davao, Manado, Bitong route and that of Jian San. We know that we still have challenges to hurdle, such as, such as the market for both countries, the negative lists such as electronics, garments, shoes, toys, medicines, food and beverage. And for the Philippines, a challenge of a unified Mindanao Halal certification from a credible and acceptable authority. The double port fees for Davao and Jensen. The CIQS, some port issues, the need for a regular shipping vessel and the route in lieu possibly of the Roro, which was discussed really, it's a reality that the Roro that was launched was too big for the route. And also the, and I agree with um, Customs Head uh, Dino Austria, uh, regarding Davao as a planned transshipment hub for Indonesia to shorten the route, like say China or Korean products to Indonesia through North Sulawesi as was discussed by stakeholders before. Hence, a possible B2B from our businessmen here and in North Sulawesi is really possible. But let me re remind you that if we have these challenges, the market opportunities is really there. We look forward to a virtual B2B as a follow-up to this webinar. In closing, allow me to thank our partner in today's webinar, the Republic of Indonesia in Davao City, for making this afternoon a very productive one. And we thank also our counterpart in Manado and Bitong, who are here also in this Zoom webinar. As how the United Nations Development Program said, 
and describe the inclusive development. Mm -hmm. Development can be inclusive and it reduces poverty only if all groups of people contribute to creating opportunities, share the benefits of development and participate in decision making, especially during this crucial time when we have the global pandemic affecting our global economy and movement. Thank you for actively participating in today's webinar and we pray and hope that we can have this route be active once more. Maraming salamat, terima kasih. Terima kasih. Thank you, Mama Lu or Ibu Roro for your very encouraging remarks. Now, yeah. uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite you all to turn on your video because we will have our uh, photo session together. Um, okay, I will count to... We have three... three Okay. okay, we start from the first session. We have three sessions. First one. One, two, three. Smile. Okay, the second one. One, two, three. Smile. With help of Indonesian Consulate General in Davos City, our speakers, Davos Chamber and North Sulawesi Chambers, I would like to thank everyone for joining us today. We hope after this there will be much more follow-up by both countries and related agencies. We always believe that working by working together, pulling our resources and building our strength, we can accomplish a very great things. Okay, this is will not be our last meeting. This is a good start to have more activities and engagement between business sectors and more coordination between both countries' government. Once again, thank you so much. Terima kasih, dagang selamat. Have a great rest of your day. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Maraming salamat. Saatnya kita bangga buatan Indonesia. Indonesia.